Creating your style in watercolour, your own identity, your own style is actually very easy because you already have all of the factors that you need. For some reason, we're not developing them, but you already have it all. Welcome to your first Watercolor Renaissance training video. Now my goal with this video is to help you to identify and to develop your own personal painting style. So I believe that there are actually five fundamental pillars when it comes to creating your own style and developing and improving your paintings. Now this doesn't just work on improving your paintings, but it will actually also improve your competition results and it increases sales. So this is a fundamental shift that occurs within your painting. I believe that there are five fundamental pillars and technique is just one of them. So when I say technique, I'm really talking about the way you apply your painting. So how you put it on the paper, how you push and pull the paint, how much water, how much pigment, that's your, your brushwork. That's what technique is, okay? That's when I'm referring to technique, it's that physical applying of paint. Now, there's more. Observation, observation, as I already said, I think in my first and second video, observation is absolutely essential because it trains your eye to see it trains your eye to be able to simplify to distinguish shape to be able to understand space to be able to understand volume to be able to understand proportions of things and relations between spaces and shapes and shapes and other shapes so observation is key because what you are putting down on the paper is something that you have seen you have seen or you have interpreted it visually okay the third pillar that i i believe is fundamental is the mind and the mind here i want to say really it's the conceptual side of a painting so that's the deciding um the choosing um the factor so that's when you say okay so i have an idea where i want to create a misty foggy scene on a on, on a lake and i want to be able to create um, I don't know some sort of reflection or or the feeling of cold or I want to be able to have a create a, um, a subject which is dynamic which has got lots of energy in it I want people to get inspired and and excited when they look at the painting so this is where you're basically deciding what it is that you want to get through in your painting but then you also need to decide and choose how you are actually going to get this across so what kind of what kind of colors you're going to use what kind of contrasts you're going to use and and how you're going to use basically your technique to put that message or that atmosphere across now the uh, the fourth the fourth um factor the fourth pillar is obviously the emotional side this is the emotional side the creative side this is the side where um your paintings make people feel you, you, you get a response, an emotional response to your painting, either by you expressing uh, how you feel, but you, most of us all want also for the people who are actually looking at our paintings to feel something themselves. So that's that capacity to not only understand what it is that you want to say, but how you can actually get other people standing in front of your painting to feel something when they look at your paintings and not just say, it's well done. This underlying factor, which even comes before all of these four pillars, is you. And how this works is that you are the deciding factor that chooses which colors you like, which chooses which contrast you like, which determines what style you will paint with, which chooses the subjects that you like, the, 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 the size of the paintings, you are the factor that determines all of the others. So your personality, your choices, your ideas are fundamental in the development of your painting. So the way that you develop, the way that you improve your paintings is to concentrate on you. You are the first pillar and by you becoming clearer in your mind to what it is that you would like, how you would like to paint, what the results are that you would like, 
you're going to be able to achieve them as long as you go in that direction. Now I want you to go and pull out four, five or six of your paintings. Bad paintings, good paintings, old paintings, new paintings, perhaps not even finished paintings. Okay, pull out a group of paintings. Okay, put the first painting up in front of you. This is going to be called painting one. So write it down on the piece of paper, painting one. Okay, painting one, we're going to use four characteristics and they're going to be the same for every single painting. So let's put them down on the paper. Painting one, um, then you're going to put down the, the four characteristics. So first characteristic will be shape. Second characteristic, tonal value. Third characteristic, color. Fourth characteristic, technique. Okay, so now that we've done that, for painting one, look at the painting in front of you. Look at the shapes in the painting in front of you. Do you like what you see? Try and just look at the shape. Big shapes, little shapes, lots of shapes, no shapes. Um, shapes too close together. There's too many shapes all concentrated in one area. Um, soft shapes, defined shapes. Look at the shapes in the painting. Now, the question is always going to be the same. Do you like what you see? Okay. Do you like what you see? Do you like the way that you work the shapes in these paintings? Oh, there's too many shapes. Oh, it's empty. Ah, oh, there's just too much going on. So yes, I like the shapes. No, I don't like the shapes. You don't need to be specific. That's all you need to say. Now, still with painting number one, look at the second point. The second point, tonal values. It's tonal values. Okay. Do I like what I see? Ah, oh, it's too strong. There's too many contrasts. Oh, it gives me a headache. Or perhaps I can't see anything. It's just all wishy-washy and everything's sort of all, all, all fused together. There's no definition. There's no volume. There's no depth. Okay. Or you look at it and you say, ah, oh, that's brilliant. Okay. Write down what you see. So painting one, um, tonal values. Do you like what you see? Yes. No. Okay. Keep it really simple. Okay. Color. Ah. <gasps> I love the color. It's full of energy. It looks like a, a fireworks. It's exciting. It makes me feel great. Or it looks like mud. My colors all look dirty. Okay, write down what you think. Okay, just write down what you think. Not what anyone else thinks, what you think. The fourth thing, um, the fourth thing is technique. Technique, um, it's too dry, it's too wet, it's too fused, it's too defined. Do you like what you see? Yes, no. Okay. Num painting number one is done. Do that three, four, five, six times which, with each of the different paintings. So painting two, run through those four characteristics. Do you like what you see when it comes to shape, to tonal value, to color, and through to technique? Now, when you've done all of that, I want you to compare your sheets. So for painting one, not good color. Ah, painting two, not good color. Painting three, Ah, I did good color. Okay, I want you to go through it. And what you're going to find, and this is where this becomes so um, important, we're working out your average, basically. That's all we're doing. So we're working out your, your, your habits. We're working out the, basically the way that you're working. And you're going to find that's all globally the same. You're going to work your tonal values more or less in the same way. You're going to work your color more or less in the same way. You're going to work your shape in the same way and your technique more or less in the same way. And you're going to start to identify your weaknesses. Well, why? Why? Because you're going to say, I love my colors. Um, yeah, my technique was good. Yeah, my shape looks okay. But perhaps it's the last factor which you think, oh, so that's where I went wrong. Or maybe you're going to look at another another group of paintings and you're going to say, okay, so the, the tonal values um, were great. Um, it's the color that went wrong. Everything else in the painting I like. I did everything else good. So it's my color that's a problem. So I need to focus on color. I need to focus on improving my color, my, my work of color. Okay, so here we are identifying what your weaknesses are. We're also going to now put those paintings away, put them aside. And now I want you to pull out the best one, whether it's in those paintings or it's somewhere else in the house. Find your best painting. I want you to look at your best painting and now run through those characteristics, but do it in a different way. I love this painting. Now identify why. Why? 
I love this painting because I love the color in it. Ah, what kind of color is it? Okay, it's really soft, nostalgic, subtle color. Ah, so that's what I like. I really love it when the colors are subtle. Okay, I love subtle colors. Okay, now I'm looking at my favorite painting. I love the, the, the definition. I love the, the, the lost and found, the mystery, the, the suggestion in it. Oh. So I like soft edges and fused edges with a little bit of def definition. Okay, so that's the technique I like. Okay, so now I'm looking at the shapes. I'm seeing that it's dynamic, it's varied, it's strong. Okay, so I like varied, strong uh, shapes. Now I'm looking at the last factor, which is what? Uh, tonal values. I like um, strong tonal value contrast, or which gives me depth, it gives me light and shade, it gives me volume, it gives me perspective. Or I like things to be very mysterious and lost and, and sort of foggy turnerish sort of a effect. Okay, write it down. You have now just done two of the most absolutely essential things that should be done, and I do this in all my workshops, I do this on my online course, and I do this with every single person that I teach, and I have done this now with thousands of people. I identify their weaknesses and I identify the, the um, painting style that they're using, but I also identify their natural style. Now, when I throw all the information together, by seeing what it is that they like, I know where they should go by understanding their personality, by understanding their choices, by understanding the way that they paint, by understanding the choices that they make, the speed, um, all sorts of factors. Um, it's very easy then to direct and to create a path, which is basically from point A to point B, and it's direct, which means you can progress really fast if you work along that path. If we keep going around in circles and saying, oh, I like this over here, or perhaps I'm going to look at this, or maybe I'll try some of this. Maybe I'll add some soap into my paintings. Maybe I'll try this. Basically, what we're doing is we're creating detours. And instead of going from point A to point B really fast and progressing in our painting, we're just going around in circles. Um, you're identifying not only what it is that you're doing in your paintings, but what it is that you like. And you have just now put your finger on your personal, uh, your personal style, the style which is logic for you. Because your personal tastes, your personal uh, appreciation is what creates your style. So there you have it. You have now a method that you can use, which is so easy. And I've really used this for, I would say, tens of thousands of people because I've done this in China, I've done this in America, I've done this in many different countries, whether it be online or on stage. Um, I, have, I have been able to pinpoint these very simple factors. And when people understand this, it's so easy to get to the, the point that you want to. We learn watercolor often by going to workshops, talking to, to um, other watercolorists, um, doing um, regular courses, going online, demonstrations, watching videos and all these sorts of things. And these are all legitimate and they're great ways of learning. However, there's a trap and the trap we've all seen it, we all know it and most of us have experienced it as well, is that when we are learning from someone else, we're learning their ideas. We're learning their thought processes, how they think, what they would do, um, what colors they would choose, where they would put contrasts. We're learning their theory. We're learning their concepts. Now, this is problematic in the sense that you will not be able to create your, your own style or at least progress in your own style if you are constantly using the, the ideas and the concept of someone else. And for me personally, the painting process is not just about the painting results. When you paint, you actually learn a lot of things. You don't just, it's not, I'm not just talking about painting. You learn, um, you, you learn a lot of things which actually help you progress as a person. And this personal journey that artists go on, I think is what the whole painting process is about. And, you know, along this path, you get things which we call paintings, and that's great. 
but I think it's actually the journey which is more important that the in, than the individual painting results. But the problem is, is that if you are not focusing on you and you are not focusing on your style and your development, then that personal journey gets stifled um, because basically you, as a person, you're not able to grow so much. When that happens, we, we basically just continue in a very habitual mode. And that's when we start to repeat the same kind of paintings. We start to paint the same kind of paintings, the same kind of, the same kind of colors, with the same kind of um, contrast, the same kind of edges, the same kind of everything. And that's when this automatic mode sets in. And that's what creates or stifles or hinders the creativity when it's the creativity that nourishes the, the progress. So to get the progress back in and the evolution into your painting, you have to go through, you have to channel that creative um, process because it's only through change that evolution can occur. If you're repeating the same thing over and over and over again, you may become good at, cre at creating the same thing, but at some point you're going to get frustrated because that evolution is not happening. But it cannot happen whilst you are still in that, that habitual and that repetition mode. So we have the, the, the courses, we have the, the fact that we're mimicking and learning the ideas of others. Then on the other side, social media is playing such a major role today in the direction that painting and artists are taking. This all comes down to these likes. People are painting to get more likes on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. People are actually listening to the number of likes or the number of views that somebody gets for a painting to determine if that painting is good or bad. So um, I'm not a big social media person, but I, I see um, the power in this and I see the dominating factor in this, which is actually encouraging people if a particular style of painting um, gets loads of, of likes, it will then encourage people to paint in that style of painting. Um, if another style of painting uh, doesn't get a lot of attention, then people will move away from that style. So we are basically listening to a whole group of people that we don't know uh, for the majority. Um, we don't know that they even know anything about painting, yet they are influencing not only what we're painting, but how we're painting it, and then on top of it, they're judging whether we're doing the right or right thing, the right or wrong thing. So social media for its good side, for its bad side, um, take what you like from it. However, we need to be less influenced, I believe, from this um, big brother eye of likes, which is basically saying you're doing good or you're not doing good. Uh, put your paintings out there because only when you are being visible will someone come and say, oh, I love what you do. I didn't know that you painted, but I would love if you, if you, if you give courses, I would love to learn. Can you teach me? You're going to have people coming into your courses or perhaps you're saying, you know, I've got these, I've got these paintings, but no one's buying my paintings. But does anyone see them except for people on Facebook? Do people in your neighborhood know that you paint? Does the butcher, the parents of your children, do other people know that you paint? Perhaps you want to have an exhibition, but who are you going to invite? Perhaps nobody knows. So become visible. Go out painting. Go out drawing. Go out and make yourself visible. And people will say, oh, I, didn't know you, I didn't know you painted. I see you every week in the swimming course or picking up the, the kids at badminton. But I didn't know you did that. Wow. Can I have a look at your paintings? I'd love to buy a painting. You're going to increase your own market. And can you imagine if hundreds of people started improving their own market? We would have an absolute dynamic um, boom. And this is what we're creating in the watercolor market. And then the last factor is when we're going to bring outside members in on a higher level to increase the finances. So you need to become visible. Enter the competition, watercolor renaissance competition or another competition. Go out drawing, go out painting, make yourself visible. 
someone like me who needs, um, I look for artists all the time, whether it's um, for the magazine, the, what, the Art of Watercolour magazine, to put people in the magazine, but also as I curate and I create exhibitions, I'm constantly looking for people that I can invite to the exhibitions. But what is happening if you're sitting in your, in your studio and you're painting inside and it's only the people on Facebook that see you. So what I'm trying to put across to you in this video is that you already have all of the ingredients that you need to not only create your own style, to create your own identity through which you're able to express yourself, create emotion, feel emotion when people look at your paintings, but you already have the tools and the information you need to develop really fast. And honestly, sky's the limit, because if you keep working on the, the, the weaknesses that's, that, are, that are, are current and you keep improving them, that every single time you do, your painting process is improving. And so your painting is improving, your competition results will improve, your sales will improve, you'll get more people in your workshops, you'll get more people that just wanna buy one of your paintings. And, and that's how things progress. But don't keep going around in circles. There is nothing more frustrating than wanting to change, to wanting to do something, yet you keep going around in circles. So there's my technique, that's my technique, that's the way I do it. I don't say that there's no other way of progressing or that my way is the best. It's just that that's the way that I've used, that I've, de I've developed, that I teach online and that I teach in my workshops and through conferences. And the results are astounding. So I know it works, okay? So you are part of the Watercolor Renaissance family. So I am sharing this information with you with the goal that we raise the level of your paintings, we are able to improve your watercolor um, bubble around you. So your courses work better. You've got more people buying your, your paintings. You've got um, perhaps more um, people that are wanting to paint because you're inspiring them. So now you're increasing the watercolor around you. So there's more artists to talk to, more artists to work with. And this is how it's basically gonna develop. It's a grassroots action, which basically improves the bottom level and works its way up, but works its way up to a very high level. So this is what the, the goal is. Um, watercolor Renaissance events. You saw the first one, it's the competition. Inscribe in the competition. You've still got two weeks left. The goal of the competition is to get you moving because I want you um, not only to act, but I want you to dare um, this habitual repetition cycle that most of us are in stops us from trying new things, stops us from, from breaking out of what we're doing. But it's the opposite. Remember that. It's that creative side of us which nourishes and encourages the evolution. So go for it. Learn that there are easy methods to do this that can get you from point A to point B really fast with really big um, effects, with a very big impact, okay? So if you find it a bit difficult to do this on your own, just drop me an email and say you're interested in an, e in an, um, an online course. Have a look at the online courses. They're all available, but get moving and start developing your own technique and developing your, your watercolour, and you're going to find that it moves very, very fast. So this was the first Watercolour Renaissance training video. The next one is obviously going to be how to improve the quality of your paintings, not just identify what the problems are, but now we're going to start to work on improving them. So I hope you like the video. I hope that I'm able to help you in some way because that is my goal. And I will say I will see you very soon.